folks, we have the absolute pleasure of having my friend Eustace to come and speak to us this morning. Um, so normally Eustace lives in Ghana, um, but this summer has been over here for a few weeks, particularly to be with us at Commission Festival, um, but also to, yeah, to, to be able to come here to speak to us this morning because um, as, as Life Church kind of increasingly, oh, Sean, I think we've got music in the background as well. Um, as we, as we kind of fulfill God's call on us to be in, in kind of the kingdom, really, and doing what God's called us to do, we're increasingly partnering with Ghana and what the stuff that Eustace is doing out there. You'll remember that Chris um, and Naomi went out there uh, just before Christmas, I think it was, wasn't it? Well, no, earlier this year, earlier this summer. Um, so, yeah, so we, we are really, really glad to have you with us. I also wanted to mention to you that afterwards, if you like the kind of thing that Eustace is wearing, there's an opportunity to purchase some things that have been made in Ghana as well. So there'll be a little stall out there. Um, there's adult sizes and kids sizes, men's and women's. You've got it all covered. So um, yeah, why don't you have a little look at that afterwards. But why don't you join with me as I pray for Eustace. Lord Jesus, I thank you that you call us to be people of the word and the spirit. And Lord, we want to come and we want to hear your word to us today. Lord, I thank you for this man. I thank you for his faithfulness to you. And Lord, we want to ask that you will fill him with your spirit now. Help us to be filled with your spirit as we hear what you've got to bring to us. And do him good as he blesses us in your name. Amen. Okay, yes, it's probably, um, <laughs> where's it gone to? <laughs> okay, good morning and uh, welcome, especially if you are a visitor here this morning. My name is Eustace, as Simon has already introduced me. If you are not a visitor, you are so welcome. And I'm sure if you're not a visitor, you might have been uh, to West Point. Oh, not West Point. Oh, no. Who went to West Point? Nobody did. <laughs> Commission Festival. And I'm sure you will agree with me and with Simon who... Am I? Okay. And with Simon who mentioned earlier on that it was a very good weekend away, wasn't it? Yeah, it was good. And... I think as a commission family, as a family of churches, it is important that we do occasionally get together like that. You know, we are scattered all over the UK and the world. So it's important that occasionally we come together to hear what the Lord is doing elsewhere. But here's a question for you. Have you thought or given a minute just to think about how you ended up in a commission church? Who's been thinking that? What? Who has been having nightmares thinking like that? No one. Some of you, it might have been through an alpha. Some of you, it's because your friends invited you. Some of you, it's because maybe you were curious. You saw the name, Life Church, what is that? I'm going to have a look, and then you stayed. Some of you, it might just be you moved locations, and the only church that you could find is Life Church. And some of you, it may be because you physically you were born into it. You didn't have any choice. Your mom and your dad were in the commission church. You were born and that's it. You stayed. But for me, I was spiritually born into commission. I still remember that day when I was born into commission. Spiritually speaking. So I had come from Ghana to join the British Army, to escape poverty, and to live a better life than I had back home in Ghana. So shortly after arriving at my unit, a lady introduced me to Grace Church, a commission church in Salisbury. You see, having grown up in Ghana, I knew and believed that there is God. But the problem was, I wasn't so sure of my relationship with God. But hey, I stand here today 
not in a single iota of doubt anymore. My confidence is in the gospel. So one Sunday morning, Kevin, who has gone to Madrid to plant a church, preached the gospel in its beauty. You know, when you are so hungry for something, anything tastes good. Do you know that? So for me, that morning, Kevin preached the most amazing gospel. Especially that bit that says, you are saved by grace through faith in Jesus alone. I was like, what? I don't know how many responded that day, but I was the first one, I think. I put my hand up, and I could feel the easiness. That morning, I had come with guilt, but I left free. I had come knowing that I'm a sinner, but I left full of joy, knowing that in Christ Jesus... I have been forgiven. It was so freeing. And I just loved it. And I want to say this to you this morning, if you are not a Christian, if you've never, ever given your life to Jesus, this can be your story too today. The Bible says this. If you declare with your mouth, Jesus is Lord, and believe in your heart that God raised him from the dead, you will be saved. For with your, mouth, with your heart you believe and are justified. And with your mouth you confess and are saved. I will urge you today to consider this. At the end, I'm going to give you that opportunity to take that step of faith. But back to my story. Shortly after giving my life to Jesus and receiving that grace and mercy, it got even better. I was filled with the Spirit. And then the Holy Spirit spoke to me. I was reading my Bible when I got to Mark chapter 5 verse 19. It says this. Go back to your people and tell them what the Lord has done for you. And how he has had mercy on you. And so in 2019, my wife, myself, and our two children packed everything. And we were sent by commission to plant Grace Community Church in Ghana. So far, so good. For us, every time we come back here, you would understand if we call it a homecoming. Because I was born into commission. Anytime I go to commission church or commission event, it's a homecoming. Now, let's read some Bible. It's important to read something. Just to cover it up, innit? <laughs> Let's go to Acts chapter 14, verse 26 to 27. If you have a Bible, if not, it might come on the screen at some point today. 26 to 27. From Atalia, they sailed back to Antioch, where they had been committed to the grace of God for the work they had now completed. On arriving there, they gathered the church together and reported all that God had done through them and how he had opened the door of faith to the Gentiles. Now, let's pray. Holy Spirit, we need you. We need you to come and open hearts, minds, and give Jesus the glory. Amen. So, when we start from Acts chapter 13, verse 1 to 3, we get the context of this passage. It starts by saying that the Holy Spirit through the church in Antioch had appointed Paul and Barnabas to go on a mission for him, for the Holy Spirit. Then from chapter 13, verse 4 to chapter 14 to 25, we read about the work for which they were appointed to do as preaching the gospel and planting churches from town to town, city to city, and region to region. So when we get to our passage here in Acts chapter 14, verse 26 to 27, Paul and Barnabas have completed the work which they were appointed to do, which they were sent to do. And they've come back reporting to the churches that sent them. They came back 
not just reporting to the apostles. They didn't just get Guy Miller somewhere in the corner and Vinu and said, oh, this is what is happening. They actually involved the whole church. The whole movement heard about it. All that God had done through them and how he had opened the door of faith to the Gentiles. This was the first time they reported back, but that was not the last time. We see again in chapter 15, verse 3, they reported. Chapter 15, verse 4, they reported. Chapter 15, verse 12, they reported. Chapter 21, verse 19, they reported. So on five different occasions, people sent on mission, come back all the time reporting to those who sent them. This must be important. But the question is, why? Why do they have to report back? I've got a few suggestions here. Number one, so that the sending churches will know what God is doing elsewhere. God is at work simultaneously all over the world. And when we send people out there to do something, and they report back to us, we get to know what God is doing elsewhere. Number two, to bring sending churches up to date in the life of the people sent. You know, when you send people out there, they have a life. And when they report back, we get to know what is happening in their life. Are they healthy? Are they well? Are they sick? We get to know that. Number three, it is good for the sake of accountability. Having been sent by churches, we want to know, are they still doing what we send them to do? Or are they just on a holiday somewhere? When they report back, we get to know that. Number four, it is also to encourage the sending churches for future exploits. So when we regularly get feedback from those we've sent on mission, we are encouraged. We get encouragement because we hear what God is doing. We see what is happening with them. And we get encouragement when somebody comes and says, I want to go too. Well, yes, go, go, go. Because we are encouraged. But imagine we send people and they don't come back. We don't hear from them. Nah, there wouldn't be any encouragement for next time, would there? Well, they, we, we might try to do it again, but it might not be with the same zeal, would it? Number five, reporting back also helps to renew and rekindle existing relationships. At least they dry out and just fall apart. As the saying goes, out of sight, out of love. We don't want that to happen, do we? Number six, to bring new people on board what has what was started before they joined, and to renew and stir a passion in the heart of those who were already there. You know, commission is growing. New churches joining, new members joining every time. We don't want to let them behind. You want to regularly feedback. You regularly let them know what has gone on ahead of them, as well as the old members we can easily lose passion, especially when the new thing comes up. Oh, let's go there. Yeah. No, no, we want you to be both new thing and the old together. Number seven, above all else, when churches hear of what God is doing somewhere else, it results in praise and thanksgiving through our Lord Jesus Christ to God the Father, who alone deserves to be praised. Hallelujah. So for this and many reasons, we think this morning, my wife, my children, here this morning, feel the need to give you a few updates of the work that you as commission and the Holy Spirit sent us to do. And that three headings. The first one will be the family part. So you will be glad to know that we have not increased in number. <laughs> but we have grown in age. So when we were going, Emmanuel was eight, he's now 13. Mary was three, she's now eight. We're doing very well. Mary and Emmanuel are both in school and they're doing very well. We seem to have settled in and we are doing our little bit for the greater good. In terms of pastoral oversight, we are under Kevin Bartlett, David Maskell. So we've got a Ghana team and in that team we've got Kevin Bartlett, David Maskell, and a guy called Pelumi. I think 
yeah, he's, he's in a church somewhere in Southampton Life Church. If you ever see him, if you, I mean, you might meet him somewhere. If you do, just give him a big thank you. He's so good. He's been very, very amazing on the team. He is, he is indeed so helpful. But yeah, these three guys are taking care of us in Ghana. And I will say we've, we've, we've been very, very uh, uh, fortunate to have them. And we love it. So they, they are taking care of us and they are blessing us every time. But here is the thing. When I say we are doing very well, it doesn't mean everything has gone our way. We've encountered challenges. There has been uh, at least two occasions that each and every one of us have been very ill, seriously ill. We've had our house burgled, stuff stolen, and other challenges as well. But through it all, the Lord has been good. And we do not have any thought of running away from the work we have been given to do. We hope we're going to complete what we've been asked to do before we do turn around. Now, the second part is the church, Grace Community Church. With great joy and excitement, we started the first meeting on the 2nd of February, 2020. It was so good. We had 11 adults and about, no, 15 adults and 7 children turning up. What a joy. How, you know, it was great because four of us that went to Ghana and to start with 11 or 15 adults, that was great with 7 children. We had momentum day one. Day 7, that is week 7, COVID, boom. Lockdown everywhere. But by God's grace, I had the opportunity to preach on a radio station. And through that radio program, we saw people come into the church, including Goslav, who will be preaching this morning at the church. So in all of it, the Lord has been going ahead of us. Apart from COVID, we've had a few challenges as well. So we've had um, one of those 15 people that started the church with us passed away during covid that was hard. Then two years ago, we had another core member, part of the 15, passing away. So we've had challenges. And we ha we've had uh, 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 different troubles. But through it all, the Lord has been good. On the positive side, we've had a new venue, which is, which is something that we've been looking for. You know, we've been fighting for, we've had to change venues a few times and they've not been pleasant. So now we have a new venue which can seat about 120 adults and 30 to 40 kids, two different classrooms. And there's also space for expansion. We spent most of last year and this year doing renovation works on the venue. If you can see when it started, when we first got it was, you know, those photos that have just gone. So we've spent most of last year and this year doing it up to that standard, and also trying to get our vision um, spot on. So as part of our vision, we've identified an objective, that is to plant a new site, God willing, by the end of this year, or early next year, in a, in a location that we've got uh, almost half of the people that come to church um, coming from. But to be able to do that, we would like to see some people saved and added to the, um, um, the main congregation before we just let this go and then do a different site. The Lord has been good. We currently have about 68 adults and children together who regularly come to Grace Community Church. We've seen people saved. We've seen people baptized in water, people filled with the Holy Spirit, people receive and use spiritual gifts such as speaking in tongues, interpretation, and prophecy. So I'll give you one example. At some point, we had only seven weeks to leave our venue to a, new, a different venue. We didn't have the different venue, but we were to leave it, the old one. Otherwise, we were meant to pay seven times our rent. The new landlord said, oh, I'm going to charge seven times. Or you leave. So we've got seven weeks. We had a church meeting, and everyone says, let's leave. 
We didn't have anywhere to go. Seven weeks, we're going to leave. Then one lady stood up and said, ah, a dream I had before had just come up. In my dream, I saw that we've got a new venue and we were refurbishing it. I was like, yes, the Lord has something for us in the future. But what about now? We've got seven weeks. You know, thank you very much. But yes, we've got seven weeks. What about that one? Then the lady stood up and said, oh, she believes the Lord is saying that we are living here, but we are not going to rent a different place. We are going to go to a permanent place. Can I confess? I never believed it. <laughs> I was like, yeah, we've got seven weeks, you know, to find a new place and live in seven weeks. I mean, if, if you... Don't even think about the British context, okay? We have even got night schools like this with nice facilities somewhere that you're going to rent. It, is, it isn't what she's saying. She's saying that we're going to find our own place that is an empty land somewhere or a building somewhere that you're going to buy. It, it's just not the British system that, oh, we're going to move from this school and there is an academy down there. So we're gonna... No, no, no. She's not talking about that. So I didn't believe it. And I was like, yeah, that's not going to happen. But I tell you what, that is what exactly happened. In less than seven weeks, we found a new place. Yes, we had to spend time, as you saw. If you go back to the uh, previous photos, you will see. We found that new place, yeah, like that. That was the state when we found it. Now, it wasn't good, you know, for what we're looking for but it was good enough to move into it. As the last lady said. And then we spent time to refurbish it to that current stage. So those prophetic words came into being. And this is what the Lord is building. The Holy Spirit is at work among us. Of course, we yearn for more. We desire more of it. But the Lord is doing something among us. The third part is the business part. You see, becoming financially independent as a church or as a family when we went to Ghana is one of the top priorities uh, we, we, we had in mind. So we decided to set up a, a business, and after a few research, we settled on a pig farming. It was because we thought and still think it will give us enough time to do the church work. So you get workers, and then you're able to do the church work. You don't have to spend too much time there. And also, we chose that because of this, uh, the, the, the ability of the pig farm to employ people. There's a lot of unemployment in Ghana. And so we've got a heart that everything that we do or anything that we do as a business will also generate employment for people. But unfortunately, I wouldn't be able to say it has gone as well as we had hoped. Things haven't gone as, uh, well with the business. We've had a few challenges, but we haven't shut down. That is a good thing. We still hope that it is going to um, make profit not so long to come. So we are still going on. So the three areas that I've just updated you on, if it's on a school report, it will look like this. Church, doing well. Family, doing well. Business can do better. <laughs> the Lord has been good to us, and I keep saying that because it is true. Great things have happened to us in Ghana. It has been by his grace, and we believe that greater things will come. But I'm sure you will agree with me this morning that God's grace does not come in a vacuum, but through an agent or an agency. For example, the Bible says we are saved by grace. But notice that it does not end there. It says through faith. That is the grace of God that saves you and me through Jesus Christ. Comes through faith in Jesus Christ. So we're saved by grace, but through faith in Jesus Christ. Without Jesus Christ, we cannot receive the grace of God because there wouldn't be any medium to present it to you. If I'm going to give you water, I need a cup to give you. 
that water. And Jesus is that cup that delivered the grace of God to you and me. God's grace does not come in a vacuum. And so it is with us who went to Ghana to plant Grace Community Church and you being part of commission. You guys, as in commission, have made yourself available to dispense God's grace to us. And we are very grateful. Somebody might say, well, when did we do that? Through your prayers and your generous giving to commission. See, when you give like you did at commission festival and probably do during the year as well to commission, some of that money goes into church planting. And that is when we come in. So thank you. We are very grateful. But yours does not even end there. Because last, just this year, yeah, Simon mentioned it. Just this year, you allowed Chris Kilby and Naomi to leave their busy schedule here to come and bless us. We are grateful. Thank you for allowing that. Because that reminds me of two things that we shared at Commission Festival at West Point when we were going to Ghana. Of how the whole of Commission can come to Ghana through. And I'm going to remind you of two. Number one is that you can come and visit when we go. Now, we haven't got a capacity to receive large visitors at one go. Hopefully that will come in the future. But the door has always been opened for those with a gift to help lay apostolic foundations and commission values to visit Ghana. It has always been there. And so thank you for allowing Chris to come and do that. Because when Chris and Naomi and Harry came to Ghana, that is what they did. It made people realize that actually it is not just our own mind that we've come to do this. Actually, we are commissioned. We are together on a mission. So thank you for doing that. And the second thing that we ask that people can come to Ghana through is prayer. And I'm sure you've been praying for commission, haven't you? Well, you should be, Simon. Yeah, yeah, should be. So when you pray for commission, you're praying for us because we are commissioned. When we pray for commission, we're praying for you. And I believe that a lot of good things have happened to, to us in Ghana because of your prayers. Because many people across commission family are praying for us. And you know what? We still need those prayers. Please don't stop. Because this is a spiritual warfare. And we need every prayer, any, everyone to come on board to pray for us. So if you would like to pray for us, please, please pray for me and my family. Pray for strength, energy to keep going. And please pray for our children so that we know when we come back here and we're going back, they know the difference. They see it. And sometimes it becomes a struggle. Just pray for them, please. And then pray for the church that God will work and see many people saved, filled with the Spirit, and also confirm the gospel through signs and wonders. Please do pray. And then if you do get a chance to come to Ghana to visit us, um, Naomi and Chris did, please take the opportunity. It will be there at some point. Okay. Let's come back to the point. If you are here this morning and you're not a Christian, I want to invite you. But before that, I want to say this. Jesus loves you. You know, you might think, well, Jesus probably loves everyone else because they are all bubbly and enjoying and having fun, but not me. No, 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 you. All you have to do is to give your life to him. I'm going to repeat that passage again. The Bible says, if you declare with your mouth, Jesus is Lord, and believe in your heart that God raised him from the dead, you will be saved. For with your heart, you believe and are justified. And with your mouth, you confess and are saved. 
The question is, have you believed in your heart? Would you like to confess with your mouth? That is all you do to give your life to Jesus. Because it's by grace. If that is you, I'm, I would like to pray with you. Shall we pray? If you have believed with your heart, I'm going to help you to confess with your mouth. I'm going to pray out. And if that is you, if your heart is opened, I will kindly ask you to pray with me. Lord Jesus, I thank you that this morning you've made yourself known to me. I'm grateful for this encounter this morning. Lord, I give my life to you. I believe. Today, I believe. And I'm confessing you as my Lord and Savior this morning. Amen. Now, as we, we, we should still be in prayer, please. If this is the first time that you've prayed that and you really, really mean it, can I, can I just see you? If you stick your hand up, I just want to see you. There might be, um, you know, a few things that the church can help you with. If you stick your hand up, um, say, I just prayed and I mean it today for the first time. Anyone stick your hand up and I will see you. Okay. Thank you very much. God bless you. Amen.